Welcome to the Indie Film Hustle podcast, episode number 70. As an artist, I feel that we must try many things, but above all else, we must dare to fail. John Cassavetes. Broadcasting from the back alley in Hollywood, it's the Indie Film Hustle podcast, where we show you how to survive and thrive as an indie filmmaker in the jungles of the film biz. And here's your host, Alex Ferrari. Welcome, my indie film hustlers, to another episode of the Indie Film Hustle podcast. I am your humble host, Alex Ferrari. Today's show is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators and filmmakers as well. Anyone can learn from thousands of online courses, focus on all different types of creative skills, and even teach a class themselves. You can jump in and check out a variety of film classes from great filmmakers, including a few that I've made myself, and continue to help you build your skills as a filmmaker. Now, if you want a special Indie Film Hustle discount for three months for 99 cents, head over to IndieFilmHustle.com forward slash Skillshare. So guys, today we have a special episode. Um, I ha- I did an interview a while back on a wonderful podcast called Filmmakers Focus with Doc Kennedy. And the interview was so cool, I really wanted you guys to take a listen to it. Uh, Doc did a great job, and I talked about a whole bunch of different things about the industry that I haven't spoken about before on uh, on the show. So I thought it'd be a nice little bonus episode to kind of toss in there for you guys. So I hope you guys like this bonus episode. So enjoy. Hey, Alex, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, man. This is exciting for me. Uh, I love, love, love indie film hustle. Oh, thank That's you so awesome much. Awesome stuff going on there, my friend. <laughs> I appreciate that, brother. Thanks again. I, I appreciate that. Well, I was excited to see that uh, Indie Film Academy mm-hmm. recently ranked you number two yeah. on their top list. Man, that's that's crazy. Jason is uh, Jason's a good friend of mine, and uh, he did that on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> he called me up. He's like, I'm not going to rank you number one, man. I'm just not going to do it. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it was just a lot of fun because I always we, – we, uh, Jason and I, we have kind of like a, a, a wonderful rivalry, but it's very friendly. We're, we're really good friends. Um, and, uh, and, uh, you know, ever since he, I think he mentioned it to me once when we were talking one day, he's like, Hey dude, you know, you like the number one filmmaking podcast on iTunes. And I'm like, I am. And, <laughs> uh, and I looked at like, I am. And the second, like within three hours, <laughs> I had a post about it. I was promoting it as the number one film. And he's like, son of a, oh, Jesus. <laughs> just, he goes, that was black Friday for me, Alex. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> But we're friends, well, and, and it's you'll good. You'll take it, huh? Now look, man. We'll take any look. We'll take anything that anything that could give you a little bit of a uh, leverage uh, or a little bit of a uh, you know bump to help you uh, move forward in your business is is greatly appreciated. And and I think it's always a good thing for for all of us, you know, in this space, the the filmmaking space, podcast specifically, to kind of help each other out as much as we can because we just want to get more people, more filmmakers to to come to this amazing resource that is podcasting. And there are some really good podcasts. Um, there's some really horrible ones, but there are some really, really good. And there's a lot of great information in this medium uh, that I think filmmakers are slowly starting to come around. Where a lot of the other niches, uh, like internet marketing or business or other things like that, have kind of you know they these guys get you know millions of views a month, uh, downloads a month. So uh, it's something that I, I'm trying to do myself, just to br- trying to bring as many filmmakers to the podcast medium as possible. I love it. Yeah, for, for me, so I'm doing a lot of driving right now. So okay. I'm able to just flip on your show, Jason's show, download all this information into my brain that, you know, while I'm doing nothing, literally, you know, just right. driving. Right. I'm able to soak in all this knowledge. And uh, it, I mean, it's invaluable to me. Yeah, it's. I mean, I, I when I, I, I've been a big podcast listener for probably over a year now, and I, and I just started listening to a lot of guys uh, outside of our niche and outside of the film industry, just kind of learning about all this kind of stuff. And uh, man, it's insane. Like the stuff that the knowledge, uh, the knowledge bombs, if you will, uh, are insane. The kind of stuff you can sit down and listen to. Like, you know, I, I just listened to a podcast on Tim Ferriss's. I love Tim Ferriss's podcast. He's like one of the top podcasts out there. And uh, he was interviewing Kevin Costner. He interviewed Jamie Foxx. 
and you just sit there listening to like Jamie Foxx talk about how he came up and stuff like that's freaking awesome and you get so many cool stories and not only entertaining but the knowledge that they come up with is insane I was just listening to Gene Simmons this morning at the gym uh, from you know Kiss and he has a new book out about you know uh, you know being a businessman and the stuff he was laying down I was like this is awesome podcasts are so so powerful you know and, and whoever's listening to this obviously knows that now but <laughs> um, but it's so so powerful especially like it's kind of like an audiobook but really quick bites of great information if the show is done right and agree more I love this, man. So uh, why don't you give us just a little bit of background about yourself, Alex? Um, I am a carny. Uh, I've been working in the carnival. No, I'm joking. Um, <laughs> no, I'm I a knew fi- there was something up. Yeah, I know. Exactly, right? Uh, I'm a cir- I'm circus folk. No, um, <laughs> basically, I've been a filmmaker for about 20 years. Uh, I've been in the film industry for about 20 years. I've uh, probably produced uh, over – Finished in, in post production where I've made my bones most of the time. Most of the time in this business, I've been in post production, probably about 15 years in the business of, of post production. I've delivered probably over a thousand projects uh, or more, uh, about, you know, between commercials, music videos, feature films, uh, shorts, documentaries, and all that kind of stuff. And that experience of just being on the post side of things has given me a very unique perspective on the film industry, as well as being a director for the last 12 years or so. I've been a director, commercials, music videos, uh, short films, and I've been produ- I've been a producer uh, on features as well. And I have a very unique perspective on the film industry because I I get a front row seat, but I get a back door seat. You know, I, I'm in that back door room while the things are going on in post, where you sit down and you're in a room for sometimes months at a time with people. And a lot of information gets shared, and in a good way. Not like, you know, the sheezy gossip way, but just like you sit there and you watch what they go through. You sit and you see the processes of finishing the movie, the technical aspects of finishing the movie, the story, all that kind of stuff. But the business side is very fascinating to me because you kind of see what they go through. Like, oh, if I would have had this actor, maybe I would have done this or uh, and figured something out. Or, if, oh, you know, I, like a perfect example, I'll give you a perfect example of one movie I worked on. They made a movie. They, I, I color graded it for them. Um, you know, small movie was out of town, out of L.A., um, and it was like a sci-fi thriller. Um, and they – no stars at all. The guy went out, tried to sell it, couldn't get it sold because he had no stars in it. And the genre – he hadn't built up an audience or anything. We could talk about that later. But uh, he was just going down the traditional distribution routes. And uh, then he came back to me six months later. He goes, Alex, I need you to color grade a, a, a few more scenes for the movie. We've shot a few new scenes. I'm like, okay, great. Who's in those? Who's in it? He's like, oh, Michael Madsen and another actor that you might know. I'm like, fantastic. And then he re-edited the movie, replaced the shots with the old actor, put the new actors in, went out and sold it. (laughs) Because he was a a very smart producer and filmmaker. He figured it out. He's like, if I don't do this, if I don't spend a little bit of money to get these actors to come in and do a few scenes for me, I'm not going to be able to sell this movie. Uh, which was so eye-opening for him. And I knew, I, I mean, I'd already known that, but I've never seen someone actually implement it, which was really wonderful to like kind of go back and like, you know what, I got to go reshoot these scenes with a name actor because that's the only way I'm going to sell this thing. Uh, so anyway, that perspective of being in the film industry, uh, it gives me like that really unique point of view on the whole thing. And, and when I came up uh, as a filmmaker, uh, Years ago, I created a, a short film called Broken, which is, I think, at this point, the most nauseating, uh, most spoken about short film in the history of short films. Because <laughs> I keep bringing it up and people keep bringing it up. So I'm like, all right, well, just let's talk about it. Um, and I was able to back 12, God, geez, about 12 years ago now. It was released in 2005. So uh, six years ago. Um, uh, 16 so yeah, 11 years ago. Sorry, I'm horrible at math. Um, we were able to shoot this movie on DV, mini DV. Uh, we had over 100 visual effects shots in it. We made uh, made it for 8,000 bucks at the time. No stars, no nothing. Shot in West Palm Beach, Florida, uh, and edited on Final Cut, color graded on Final Cut on a TV, <laughs> not on <laughs> yeah, not on a monitor. It was the very first thing I ever color graded in my life, and I color graded it in Final Cut with a bunch of different plugins that I created this insane look for. And we released it into the world, and I got into over almost 200 film festivals with it. Roger Ebert reviewed it. 
um, which is a whole other story. And But the big thing was I was able to sell it. And I actually put together this course, not course, but I put together this um, kind of film school behind the scenes of how I was able to do it because a lot of filmmakers wanted to know how I was able to pull so much out of that technology, out of the mini DV technology. I was able to take it and make it look very filmic uh, when a lot of people had the exact same camera and just had no idea how to do it. So I put together about three hours worth of stuff and put it on a DVD and sold it. And we made uh, roughly over $90,000 with it. Uh, you know, selling DVDs, sold over 5,000 DVDs, um, and just kept going, and it just kind of grew into this thing. Uh, and today, people are still talking about it, you know, and I I just repackaged it and put it together in another course that I, I released called um, Filmmaking Hacks, How to Shoot and um, uh, Market Your Film. And I put a bunch of the stuff that was still very relevant, added a whole bunch of new stuff, and people still like love it. Like they still love all the all this kind of behind the scenes stuff that I did on it. So that's a not a quick uh, breakdown of who I am. But <laughs> it's something. Sorry, didn't mean to throw a pitch in there. I just was just you kind know, of just went into it. Yeah, that's what that's what we do, right? Yeah, <laughs> hustling, baby. We pitch hustling. when we can. We hustle, baby. We hustle. So one question that I want to ask you, and this really ties into what you were just talking about. Mm -hmm. What do you see up and coming indie filmmakers doing right? Um, just doing right in general? Yeah, uh, just doing right. I mean, we can talk about what they're doing bad all day long, but let's talk about a little bit about what they're doing right, and then we'll tear them down. <laughs> okay. Well, I think a few filmmakers uh, that I've seen and studied who understand the concept of audience building, understand that that is the new paradigm that – the whole film industry is changing into. If you want to be an independent artist, independent filmmaker, you have to build audiences. You have to be able to build the audience. Uh, have you ever heard of the the, um, the concept of the thousand uh, thousand true fan theory? I have. Yeah. So for the audience, uh, for the for your audience, they might not know the thousand true fans is uh, was written by an art. It was an article written by the co-founder of Wired magazine, and basically stating that all you need is a thousand true fans to support you as a artist, filmmaker, whatever. And the concept is if you got a thousand people to pay you a hundred dollars a year, it's a hundred thousand dollars. That's not a bad deal. Uh, most people can make a decent living at a hundred thousand uh, dollars doing what you love to do. And if you start thinking about it, it's like, well, that's about ten dollars a month, you know, or ten or twelve dollars, whatever the math is. Um, and it started making sense. So, if an, a, if a filmmaker can build an audience, that audience can support that filmmaker through multiple films. So, one of the uh, like there was a movie that just came out um, called uh, Kung Fury. Have you heard of that one? Yep, I've seen it. It's insane. I love that. Movie. <laughs> it's hilarious. <laughs> it's so funny. But that was such a wonderful example of what a filmmaker did right. This guy who is outside of the business, and when I say outside, I mean outside. He's in like Sweden or something along those lines. He's not in the U.S. at all. He had a love for 80s movies and decided to make a short film about, you know, I think it's a kung fu cop uh, who's in the 80s who goes back in time to kill Hitler. <laughs> and... Which seems like a logical concept. Obviously, obviously, and then <laughs> and there's Thor involved too, and and they go back into time. There's some dinosaurs. It's just brilliant. It's just a brilliant concept. So, but he went on to Kickstarter, and I think he raised one hundred thirty thirty thousand dollars for a short film. Um, but he was able to crowd crowdsource and crowdfund. So as he was building his budget up, his money, his war chest, he was building up an audience, and then that audience started talking, and they started evangelizing for him. And all of a sudden now, he's made obscene amounts of money with this short film. Puts my, puts my poor little broke into shame. Um, he, he's made obscene amounts of money. He's been able to merchandise like crazy. People are cosplaying to him uh, at comic conventions. You know, it's this kind of underground thing, but it doesn't have to be Star Wars. You know, it could be underground. It could be that, that small audience. And that's the thing, I, I think one of the things that, if I can jump to one thing that people do wrong, filmmakers do wrong, is they try to appeal to everybody. But the people who really succeed appeal to a very niche audience. So if you try to be broad, you can't afford to get the attention of an entire broad audience. So you can't go. I need. I need to. I need to go after males from 18 to 45, 
you, you don't have the money to do that. You're not a studio. You don't have $100 million to blanket all media for a week for people to, to be aware of your movie. But what this guy did, he's like, you know, I'm going after guys and girls who love the 80s. And I'm going to do this really ridiculous little short about the 80s and people who love the 80s and love those action movies of the 80s and the sci-fi of the 80s. Um, and that's his niche. That's who he went after. And he was able to not only make a living off of that now, he's building it up into like this little empire that, you know, I'm sure he's not making millions with it. He might be. Who knows? God knows how much he's making with it. But the point is that he's he's a successful filmmaker. He's made a pro and it's a short. It's a short. It's not even a feature. It's a short film. Um, I can't wait for him to do a feature film version of this. Like I'm sure he's working on it as we speak. And I'm sure the second that he puts it out there to crowdfund again, he'll probably get half a million bucks to make it or two million bucks to make it, you know, because there's such an audience. So he was able to build that audience up and start mining that audience, giving the audience what they want and the audience and then is in return paying him or giving him money to continue to do his art. So it's a, it's a wonderful exchange. You create a product. The audience wants that product. They exchange money for it. It's called commerce, <laughs> you know, and but it's a wonderful thing when an artist is able to do that. And I think that was a that's a wonderful example of someone doing it right. And just building that audience is so, so, so important. And then there's so many other steps along the way. But audience building uh, and crowdsourcing as opposed to crowdfunding, and those are two different things, um, is so integral into the filmmaking uh, filmmaker's process nowadays. It has to be. So I can, even though I can't hear people, I can hear them right now saying, but I don't have an audience. How do I, I can't do that. You know, how do I even start? Well, How do you tell that person, Alex? Well, I'll tell you what I just did. I I launched Indie Film Hustle six months ago. That's all. Six months ago, and you're already the top-ranked yeah. filmmaking podcast on iTunes. So I'm going to tell you how I did it, and this is how – and this is what I, I'm now teaching and, and trying to spread the word on. Um, I literally came out of nowhere. I was not active on Facebook. I was I had a Facebook account of course and you know I've had you know people from the olden days from broken days and stuff. Don't forget I was huge on MySpace by the way. But uh, <laughs> huge on MySpace by the way. So um, I was I had no Twitter account. I had I mean I had my personal again just just to have it. No, no other reason, but never really used it. Had no no website, no concept. This was a brand new entity. No one had ever heard of it before, yeah, and I leveraged nothing. Uh, I leveraged the only thing I leveraged was a handful of people who knew who I was, and that was a small handful. It wasn't a mount, you know. I didn't have a huge following by any stretch. And when I mean a handful of people, I mean these are friends of mine, you know. <laughs> That's it. So I literally launched Indie Film Hustle and started to build an audience. Now they, I'm sure you're going to ask Alex, how did you do this? I created um, I, I created a brand new Facebook page, had zero followers. I created a brand new Twitter page, zero followers. Created a brand new Instagram page, zero followers, and created a YouTube page, zero followers. Brand new, starting from scratch. And then I just started pumping content out, pumping really good content out because for me, I knew who my audience was. My audience was independent filmmakers. I know independent filmmakers. I love independent filmmakers. They are. They are the, 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 the audience that I know inside and out because I am an independent filmmaker. So I understand what I need and what I want and I, what I would pay money for and what I would find valuable. And I did not see that in the marketplace. Um, similar to Kung Fury, there are no other you know, cop, Miami cops who go back in time to kill Hitler movies. So um, they're very rare and if, 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 they, if there are any at all uh, other than his. So I saw I saw a, a, a hole in the marketplace. Now don't get me wrong, there are other people doing what I do, like you know, like we talk about Jason with Indie Film Academy, Scott uh, over at Film Trooper, um, and a bunch of other guys who do what you know what I do. But the difference was I came in from a different perspective altogether, and everyone has a different flavor of what they do and how they how they present their information. I came from a position or, or a place of 20 years experience. Um, a lot of post experience and also filmmaking experience so I can just kind of go out there and go, you know what, guys, I'm going to tell you guys the truth of stuff that I, I know for a fact that these are these are truths that I, I'm not seeing anyone tell you. So I started creating content based around that. And then I fell into this podcasting 
uh, format, which was very strategic. I was going to create a podcast, but I had no idea how powerful podcasting really was until I jumped into it. And then I saw that there was a very big hole in the marketplace of, of podcasting. So I was like, you know what? Let me go. I'm going to, I'm going to give the, everybody as much great information as I possibly can. Things that nobody else talks about. Um, things like how to know, how to know when to work for free. Uh, post-production workflow, understand it or die. Um, you know why you shouldn't maybe shoot 4K if you're not ready to shoot 4K because you might not understand the workflow and you might die in post-production, which is something I've seen many times now. So these are things that I was just kind of going down the road. Don't hire a DP just because they have a red camera. You know, <laughs> um, mistakes like that that people aren't talking about. So I'm like, let me just put some shine and light on it. So because I was able to do that, I started building a following because I created great content. I created content that was relevant to my niche. So I understood my niche, I understood my audience, and then I started to give the audience what they wanted for free. I'm giving it to them for free. I, I just want to build an audience. So as I keep giving them free stuff, free stuff, free stuff, and by the way, it's insane the amount of stuff I put out. Uh, I and, and by the way, I'm, I do this all myself. I have nobody else with me. So, so you're making all the graphics, you're doing everything. everything. I designed the website from scratch myself. I'm the tech guy. I have no, I have, I have nothing. I've, I've, I've nobody else, dude. This is a, everything you see that has Indie Film Hustle's name on it. It's either by me, or I occasionally I'll get a guest post from somebody. And even then, I'm still creating the graphics and launching it and marketing it and pushing it and all that kind of stuff. So I put out a tremendous amount of content because I'm insane. <laughs> <laughs> And I have a vigor of um, – what's the word? Um, ambition. <laughs> it's, it's almost insane the amount of ambition I have. Uh, and when I turn it on, it's, it's very difficult to turn off the spout. So I, I, I just wanted to keep going, keep going, keep going. So when I hit the scene, um, like Jason and Scott and these guys, they contact me like, who, who are you? <laughs> like, like what's – where did you come from? And I came in like a freight train. A couple, of, I think a few people called me a freight train because it was just like a nonstop entity that just kept coming. And uh, and and we became friends and we kind of started talking to each other and helping each other out because um, I believe that if you help other people around you, the tide lifts all boats. And yeah. that's that's you know as opposed to like oh you're my competition you're my competition. I I noticed that from other niches that I was studying in you know, other internet marketers and things like that, they don't cannibalize each other. They kind of help each other. So I think a lot of times filmmakers themselves like, oh, well, I've got a movie and you've got a movie and you're going to take my money away from my crowdfunding. I'm like, no, dude. Like, I guarantee you the guy who's going to give 50 bucks to Kung Fury is not going to give 50 bucks to the period piece. You know, it's just like, dude, exactly. it's just, no, it's, it's, there's no competition. And I, and I learned that also from George Lucas, who said at the early days, that uh, him, Scorsese, Spielberg, Milius, De Palma, Coppola, they were all at the gates, but they wouldn't be let in. The studios wouldn't let them in. So instead of trying to beat each other up to try to get in like a crab, you know, pulling each other down, they all helped each other. They said, well, look, like out in the olden days, uh, you know, the cavemen, they said, well, you know, if we're by ourselves, we have a much less chance of survival. But if we group together, we have a much bigger chance of survival and helping each other and then we can grow and become a stronger entity and so itself and that's what they did and there's always competition of course but but they helped each other so i've gone on off on, i've gone off on a tangent oh okay <laughs> sorry about that but anyway so that's how i've been able to build this up i've built up my twitter account now just hit 14,000 followers um, i'm over 12,000 followers on instagram my my Facebook's around 1,500 because Facebook's really tough unless you want to pay, and I refuse to pay. So uh, it's a lot harder to, to get followers there. But even if you got a million followers, Facebook doesn't let you talk to them because that's yeah. the way Facebook is. So um, I started going after other other uh, areas, and then I got almost 1,000 followers on uh, – um, and I think almost like 50,000, 40, 50,000 views on YouTube. Uh, so I did this all within six months. Uh, and then, you know, my traffic for my site has grown and grown and more people are seeing what we're doing. Uh, but that was done literally by one guy who did a lot of research. I did a lot of work. I studied this whole thing probably about a year before I launched. So that might just be age because I'm not a young buck anymore. So <laughs> I sit there and I kind of analyze things and, and 
when I when I launched, I launched hard. I didn't launch like quietly and like oh, let's just build it up. But like no, I launched very hard. And that's how filmmakers need to be. You have to be aggressive, but you have to understand what you're doing. You have to understand the study, the techniques, and learn the craft of what you're trying to do. So that's in a nutshell how to build an audience. I'm actually gonna I'm probably gonna create a course one day about how to how to do this. Like you know, but I'm gonna hopefully be doing that with a movie. You know, like actually take everybody through a process of actually doing that with an actual film itself. But but I have been able to build up a pretty decent size audience very, very quickly. Um, you just have to you just got to study it, man. You got to study who you're going after. If you're a horror, if you're a horror guy making a horror movie. Well, hell, man, there's a lot of horror fans out there. So go find them. Build that audience up. Do something cool. You know, and give them good content. People want to be entertained. It's kind of like Gladiator. <laughs> Are you not entertained? Like they, they want to be entertained. They want good quality content, whatever that niche is. If you're a vegan chef, you know, and you sell recipes, <laughs> you know, give recipes away. You get people. To, there's, it's easy. It's not as hard as you think to build uh, an audience. It's just giving them great free content at first uh, to build that audience, to build that trust, to build that rapport. And then slowly but surely, you start adding more value to them with other content that you charge for, whether that be a movie, T-shirts, uh, events, uh, meet and greets, uh, you know, uh, you know, audio courses, uh, a million the books. You know, it's a million ways to, to then uh, eventually monetize an audience. But first, you just want to – and you have to continue to give them free, great content and just build relationship. That's all it is. Exactly. I just, we just had Ashley Scott Myers on uh, of mm -hmm. SellingYourScreenplay.com. Okay. You know, he's got 10,000 people on his email list. That's awesome. And it's, you know, something that has taken a little bit of time. Not everybody's going to run out of the gate like you have, Alex. So, well, um, no, no. yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm, I'm look, I'm like, like, yeah, okay, go ahead. Sorry, sorry. But at ahead. the same time, uh, well, now he's got this uh, short film or a, a feature film that he's producing, mm -hmm. and he's using the email list that he's created mm -hmm. to help fund some of that. You of know? And it's not uh, just trying to take money from people. It's not building this list to uh, be able to uh, use them in that way. Mm -hmm. He's just given so much free content like you have that people are absolutely willing to help him out with the project that's important to him. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's the, it's, you're leveraging your audience. And, and but that's in, in a really good way, you know. Yeah. I, I I see this from, you know. Do you know who, you know who Tim Ferriss is? Yes. Yeah. All right. So Tim Ferriss, uh, he he did a TV show um, uh, that was supposed to air on I don't know CNN or something like that. For whatever reason, they shot 12 episodes of the TV show, uh, which is him him doing you know crazy stuff and kind of you know learning how to be a world class drummer in seven days and stuff like that. Uh, and watching the process of it, and it was a great show, but it was it never. I think it aired twice, two episodes aired, and then they pulled it, and then something happened, and they just lost the rights to it. So he went after the rights to get it back because he's like, look, I know I can monetize this. I know I can. I, I know I can get this to my audience. I need the my audience to see this. And he has a very big audience based on his book, um, The Four Hour Work Week, which yeah. every filmmaker on the planet should read. Uh, it's an amazing, amazing book. Uh, and so he got the got it, and he started leveraging his audience. He's like, hey, guys, I got a new show. Within a week, he was the number one TV show on iTunes. Wow. <laughs> because – but he has a huge audience that he's given – you know, he's given so much free content out to, and he's built this, this wonderful fan base that – People just and he started off with nothing as well. Like they ever don't under, they understand that all the audience, everybody in the audience has to understand. Everyone starts off with nothing. Everyone. No one's born with an audience, unless you're the royals. <laughs> and even then, you don't really care about the audience at that point because you you know you're just doing your thing. But generally, no one starts off with with, with a big audience. No one. It, it, you have to build it. You know, Kevin Smith has been a genius at giving his audience what they want and he has built an industry uh, around himself and around his not only his films but about him around himself which he can monetize much easier as a celebrity than he can as a director and some people might you know might judge him for that and other people might not but 
gotta give it to the man. He knows what he's doing, and he leverages it, leverages his audience constantly, and his audience loves him for it. I mean, same thing for, I mean, if you want to go even deeper, uh, Troma. You know who Troma Films is? I don't. Okay, so if you if if you type in Troma, uh, T R O M O Troma, Troma, yeah, Troma, Troma Films. Lloyd Kaufman created, and, and Lloyd's going to be on the show in a few weeks, uh, probably in a month or so. I, I interviewed him. He's been around since the 30s. He made a movie, uh, the, uh, not the 30s, uh, he's been around for about 30 years. He made a movie called Toxic Avenger, uh, which is a classic, an 80s classic movie. And he built an entire company around this kind of schlocky uh, filmmaking, which is so odd because he's such a classically trained, very intelligent man, I found out. I found out. Uh, but he makes, you know, Toxic Avenger, Tromeo and Juliet, uh, you, you know, so many different crazy movies. But he built an audience around that. He took he took Toxic Avenger and people started following about and then and they, they just started pumping out movies like this. And he's built an entire business over the years about this process, about how he was able to to um, to, to to mine his audience. And, and give his audience what he wants, that, what they want. And that's something a filmmaker needs to figure out. They need to figure out who they are as a filmmaker, as a person, as a business person, and then find their niche and then attack, but in a good way. You know, just go after who wants to see your stuff. And it might, and it might be before, it might be the chicken, be, <clears throat> the chicken before the egg kind of scenario. Like I don't know what my audience is, but I I like making these kind of movies. I'm like, well, if you like making those kind of movies, go find the audience to make those kind of movies. Or if you want to go after an audience, find the audience first, then make content for that audience. You know, but don't try to be everything to everybody because you'll never you'll never make it. It's just it's it's impossible. It's impossible to do something like that. And I hate to use the word impossible, but if the studios with hundreds of millions of dollars can't do it, uh, you can't either. Nobody can. No one can be everything to everybody, ever. It's not possible. But this totally makes sense. You know, when you go to see a Tarantino film, you know what you're getting. He's built. He's built an audience up. He's built it up in a. He's built it up in a different way. And then every every like Robert Rodriguez has an audience, obviously. And yep. So does Tarantino. So does Kevin Smith. But you know, Tarantino and Kevin Smith are two very different audiences. But yeah. but they kind of overlap a little bit. They're, they're you know because you know I like Tarantino films and I like Kevin Smith films. So they they kind of overlap a little bit, but. The true fans of Kevin Smith and the true fans of Tarantino probably wouldn't hang out often. Uh, but Tarantino has built his audience up around his movies. Same thing as Spielberg. Spielberg has an audience. that He's a brand. So is Martin Scorsese. You go to see a Martin Scorsese movie, you know what you're going to get generally. You go to see a Spielberg movie, you know what you're going to get generally. And it's only when, when filmmakers vary from what they're known for is where that's when things – become awry. So like when Scorsese did Last Temptation of Christ and Kunden, you know, which are not his standard stuff, people were like, what's going on? But then, you know, after you do so many movies, you could do whatever the hell you want. You know, Ridley Scott does a million different genres and stuff. So then that becomes your brand. You just jump from genre to genre. So you don't go see a Western because Tarantino did it. You go see it because Tarantino made it. Yep. You know, uh, and that's a brand. And then, you know, it's, I can go on for hours about this. <laughs> <laughs> well, so one of the podcast episodes, it was early on that really turned me on to what you got going on here, Alex. Is mm -hmm. It was talking about, do you have to move to L.A. to be <laughs> successful? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you yeah. share with us a little bit about that? And it, is it mandatory that you move to L.A.? No, you know, what I said in the podcast, I'll, I'll repeat it here, but it, it basically I moved to L.A. because, uh, you know, I've, I was in Florida, which is a smaller market, obviously. It's a, it's a large filmmaking market, probably one of the top five in the country. Um, but it was a small, you know, it was a sm much smaller than L.A. by, by all, all, all stretches. But I, I moved out here because, uh, I you know, I just wanted to go out to L.A. I needed to be where the action was. So that was the difference for me. I came out here with nothing. Uh, I knew three people, just like I did launching Indie Film Hustle. I had a I had a uh, a Final Cut system and a color grading system, which were both the same. Uh, and I put it up in a second bedroom, and I just started going after work, and I started getting work. But mind you, I also had you know ten years of demo reels and you know work underneath me that I did in Florida, so I wasn't just a fresh kid. But uh, but I was a nobody here, and I just started doing good work and good work and good work. The thing about moving to L.A. or to a big market is that your skill level will grow faster 
because uh, you are around people who are doing this 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So you can't walk into a Starbucks in LA any time of the day without somebody working on a screenplay. Like it's just prerequisite. I, I feel that if, if there isn't somebody, I think Starbucks hires somebody to sit there and write a screenplay. Because everywhere I go, every time I go, there's always a guy writing a screenplay or talking about a screenplay or talking about a story. It's just like it's it's so embedded in the culture here of, of LA that you are around it 24 seven. So you're challenged when you work with certain people because they've just been doing it so long. So you learn faster. You start get you know, it's kind of like when you're a carpenter, you know, if you're you know, you, you're at home whittling away on some wood and all of a sudden they throw you into like, I need you to carve, you know, a six foot statue. You're going to learn a lot of things you might have not learned because you were just whittling away on a little piece of wood as opposed to going to this huge, you know, Michelangelo's esque uh, event, you know, a project. Same thing happens here in L.A. Now, to say that L.A. is the only place now, it, it might have been before, but not anymore. New York is still a very big market. Atlanta has become a huge huge filmmaking market because of their wonderful incentives um you know before it was louisiana for a little while before the incentives dried up florida had incentives too but florida has a really big production community as well uh austin has a pretty big you know has a lot of um a pretty big uh, community as well um but there's a handful there's not a lot of like big communities but la if i was if it if it were me today la new york atlanta and possibly miami because Miami is smaller now than Atlanta is, uh, or Georgia in general, like Savannah and, and those places. But I think those are the three right now. And, I, I, I'm, and I'm sure a whole bunch of people around the country are, well, how about the Kansas? I'm like, well, I'm <laughs> not hearing a whole lot of stuff coming out of Kansas, guys. Sorry. Austin's also a very big filmmaking community as well. But from what I understand and from people who go there, it's nothing compared to L.A. It's nothing compared to what Atlanta's going. The amount of – there's 26 feature films going on right now in Atlanta, like right now. So – and a lot of them are big studio movies. So, you know, I, it's – those I, – I do think that you should, if you're a filmmaker, go to wherever you are. And if you're a mom, if you're in India, you know, go to where Bollywood is. You know, if you're in England, go where, you know, Pine Studios is. I don't know where the, the mecca is. London, I guess. You know, go wherever the mecca is for filmmaking and set up shop and just start learning because you'll learn much faster. I learned – in a couple years here, things that took me five, six years to learn back home in, in Florida. It's just because you're just exposed to so many more uh, experienced people uh, and projects that you just wouldn't have access to. You just would not have access to. So you're just kind of honing your skill at a much faster rate uh, as opposed to just watching YouTube videos or taking courses online. Those are wonderful and they're invaluable. But – Getting on a set, you know, walking on the set of 24, which I had the opportunity to, uh, in in kind of watch what they're doing and you know work with some of those guys, you just like Jesus, man, like, you know, you don't got this back home, <laughs> you know, where there might be one guy in Florida that has, you know, he's the big Kahuna as far as stunts are concerned. You've got 400 guys out here who have, you know, credits list down to your arm, and you know, to work with someone like that is insane, which I had the opportunity to work with on some of my projects. So yeah, I say I say do it, but do it when you're ready as well. Cause don't come out to LA or or New York or a big city, you know, when you're twenty and just kind of wish and pray that something's gonna happen. So um, yeah, I agree with that hundred percent. Yeah, because if it, it, it will it, it will it will it'll destroy you like i i came out to la but I, I didn't i don't know if i said this in the show or not but i came out to la in 2001 trying to peddle my my little editing reel around and the town ate i do me remember alive. you talking about that yeah and my and yeah and my the, the town ate me alive i was so not ready i had no plan uh and i was completely eaten alive uh and it took me another six seven six years seven years to come back but by then I'd already had a lot more stuff under my belt. I was a lot older and uh, I came with a plan, a crazy plan. I don't know if you remember the plan. It was, it was crazy, but cause I literally, my, you know, my wife who was not my wife at the time, but we both came out here, knew three people, uh, got a, got a room in, in Toluca Lake or, or, or apartment in Toluca Lake, which is kind of like the right by Burbank by Disney. And, um, 
got a got an apartment, put up an editing system, and I brought a whole bunch of DVDs that I bought from going out of business uh, Hollywood videos and sold them on Amazon as a, as a revenue stream <laughs> while I got things going. So, you know, and that's a whole other story, but that's the hustle. And that's, that's why I call it indie film hustle because I was like, you know what? We all hustle all the time and why not, why not call it that? That's the whatever it takes. You got to, man. I mean, all these guys who've made it, you know, a lot of people see the, the a lot of people only see the overnight success. They only see the award. They only see that one box office hit. They don't see the 20 years behind them or the 10 years behind them or the thousands of hours that they've put into their craft or into, you know, networking properly or understanding what they're doing to get to that point. It takes so much time to do to get to those certain levels. I think that's one thing that filmmakers, young filmmakers in general, don't understand is they think that, oh, I'm going to put some stuff up on YouTube and I'm going to be huge. I'm like it doesn't work that way. It, it just doesn't. You have to understand your craft. You have to understand um, what you're doing and and really learn your stuff before you can make it big. And even then, there's guys who have 20 years of experience underneath you, and under underneath them, and they're still struggling to get noticed or get this and that. You know. So yeah, it takes a lot of work. Those 10,000 hour theory is probably light. It takes many more hours than that to, 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 to hone your skills in whichever way, whatever, um, uh, whatever uh, you want to learn or whatever you want to do in life. And, that, and there's the value in, in surrounding yourself with people that have been there, done that. That's a totally another episode. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so as we kind of wrap things up here, Alex, uh, you want to share with us just a little bit about what you're excited about this coming year? Well, this year, um, Indie Film Hustle is, um, you know, I've, I've, where I've worked so hard to get this this kind of audience. I'm building this audience. I'm building what, what I'm doing with Indie Film Hustle. So I'm, I'm really excited that um, I'm going to be bringing a bunch of new stuff to the audience because the audience has actually reached out to me. And this eventually will happen once you start building your own audiences is that, like, Alex, we want <clears throat> we want you to help us in this way or help us in that way. And, you know, I even get I even get emails like, how can I support you? Like, what can I buy something? I want to give you money because they're so grateful for all the, the free knowledge and the free, uh, you know, uh, content that I'm giving them, the value that I'm giving them that they actually ask, like, where can I, do, you know, what do I can I donate to you? Can I buy something? Uh, and then a lot of other people are like, can you put a course together on really breaking this down or can you do a course about this? So that's what I have started to do. I've started creating courses for my audience because in, in certain areas that I think people in our in our in our business don't have you know it, my my basically my take on certain things so I created filmmaking hacks uh, how to shoot and uh, market your film because I think that's invaluable it shows you goes through the whole process of how I did three films I'm going to add my four, a fourth film in soon um, it's a living course so I'm always changing and adding stuff to it and it's about 9 hours long at this point and it goes through how I made uh, a bunch of my movies, uh, co uh, commentary tracks from a bunch of different departments from all of the movies as well. Uh, you get to see the movies as well in there and analyze what I did, I did what I did right, what I did wrong. I'm not saying that they're the greatest movies of all time. I'm not saying they're Oscar winners. They're just my movies. They're just what I did at that time. I look at some of the stuff I did in the past. And I'm like, oh, I'm sure. But, <clears throat> but with all artists, we all do yeah. that. It's Absolutely. just it's just the way we all are. So <clears throat> I created that course. I had created another cor course called Twitter Hacks, how to get 10,000 true fans in 10 weeks because it took me about 10 weeks to get 10,000 followers on, on Twitter because Twitter came along a little bit later. And now I, and I show you how not only to get those uh, followers but how to leverage those followers, how to engage with those followers, how to bring them into your ecosystem, how to get them into your website and um, – you know, start building a community around them because it's just, that's just another funnel of finding people. You know, YouTube is another one. Uh, you know, Facebook's another one. The podcast is another one, and and so on. There's multiple different um, funnels that you can find uh, that people can kind of come into your little ecosystem. So I created that course. It's done very very well. Um, I sell it now for 
I think we're selling it for 97 bucks, but if you go to our site, uh, you get a, you can just click on it, get a coupon for 25 bucks. So it's invaluable. That's around three or four hours long, and it really breaks it down how how quickly. I mean, if you take that course, you'll have 200 followers within the first day or two. I have one guy who took it and he doubled from 1,500 to 3,000 in, in less than a week, right. uh, just by using basic stuff. And these are real people. Like these are yeah, real. These that's are the thing. they're real people. They're people who are interested in what you're doing. They're not fake. I'm not telling you go buy 20,000 followers. No, these are real, real people that that you've taken time to build up, and it takes time to build them up. But and then they become your army. That's the thing. That's the thing about building an audience is they become your army. They go out and evangelize for you. They retweet your stuff. They'll repost your stuff. They'll comment on it and they'll kind of share it with their communities and so on and so on. And and I've seen stuff happen. Like I did um, – now I'm going off on a tangent. I apologize. Uh, but I saw the most controversial post I've done. Which Do you know, do you know which one it is? I can't take a guess actually. It's the 4K. Why filmmakers really? should not – Yeah, oh god. Woof. I've gotten a lot of heat from that, but I also got a lot of love for that. And yeah. basically, it's like why independent filmmakers should not shoot 4K. Is the po- is the, it was a podcast and a post, and that one alone has been downloaded 35,000 times. Wow! As a podcast, that's insane for a for a, a podcast in our niche. Now, mind yeah. you, not all of my podcasts get 35,000 downloads. I wish, um, but. It's insane to be, that that's how popular it became, and I saw it virally just explode, like literally just went, and I literally was watching it in real time. It was fascinating. I posted somewhere, then it would get shared five more times, and then it would boom and boom, but and within the first day, it was just like an onslaught. It was like my my, my website almost crashed because I was getting so much traffic off of one really popular vote and i wasn't doing it to like kind of clickbait or anything like that it's, it was a really valid argument trying to help people uh and the majority of people i'm going to say probably about 80 to 90 percent of people really understood what i was trying to say whether they agreed with it or not they understood it and they they that validated and then there's of course the the people who are like you're an idiot and i'm like that's you're gonna get that in the world. It's, I don't care. It's fine. Sure. But that's the that's the, the the power of kind of like an audience. And, and once you, you, have, you know what I like about those people that are saying you're an idiot, they're mm-hmm. still talking about you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I, le- I learned that from uh, Howard Stern. Because uh, every you know how many people hate him, but they kept listening sure. to him <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just to see exactly. just to see what he would say next. So and they'll they'll tweet it out and say this is stupid, you know, and then oh hey there's my link. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So um so I created Twitter hacks and then I just created a new course which will be out. Uh, I don't know when this is going to air, but we're hopefully going to have it out next week, which will be first week in February, called Film Festival Hacks, uh, which is uh, a co a co creation with um, Chris Holland from filmfestivalsecrets.com. Chris has been around in the film in the film festival business for God, over a decade, and he's been behind the scenes. And then I have all this experience and on the other side of the badge, as we like to call it, with being in, I've been, I've been, my films have played in probably almost 600 film festivals worldwide. Uh, so I have a very unique perspective on film festivals that way. So the combination of both of us in the same course, talking about both perspectives of, of things, is so powerful and my god i wish i would have had this course because that would have saved me probably the first thousand bucks that i spent on broken sending out you know uh submission fees and how how that whole magic happens and that kind of like dark art of like am i going to get in am i not going to get in is this the right festival are they just going to take my money are they are they even watching it all this kind of stuff so we put this whole course together it's about almost four hours long or a little bit over four hours it's insane. Like it really, really is insane. And that one, people can go to filmfestivalhacks.com, uh, and uh, they'll get a. Uh, I think for the first two weeks they'll get it for 25 bucks. After that, it's gonna, it's gonna go up. And, um, and then I have one other course that I. Um, have you ever heard of Michael Haig? Or Chris. I have. Michael Haig and Chris Volger. No, I can't say that. I have. You've heard of the writer's journey? That's the author. That, that's where I've heard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, the writer's journey. Um, Chris Volger and Michael Hay, who wrote How to Write. Um, the exact title is Writing Screenplays That Sell, uh, which has been around for about 20 years or so. And and Michael and I kind of got together to do another course called um, Storytelling and Screenplay and Story Secrets: uh, The Hero's Two Journeys, 
which is basically these two guys lecturing about their the hero's journey, which is the Joseph Campbell story, and um, Michael Haig's six-stage process of story, and combining them the two. It's an insane course. It's about four hours four hours long, and they sit there for an hour and break down Aaron Brockovich, like beat by beat. So we kind of joined forces to release this course, and that's going to hopefully be out as well next week uh, on the on the first week of um, of uh, of February. So we're going to be doing for Indie Film Hustle is going to be. I want Indie Film Hustle to be kind of a resource for filmmakers, an affordable resource for uh, filmmakers to get really insane uh, training that they might not get anywhere else uh, and have access to training that they might not have anywhere else. And especially for people from around the world, not just the U.S., um, but you know, a lot of people who listen to me are in India um, or in South Africa or in Australia or – you know, in England or outside of, of the U.S. And a lot of times they just don't have access to the stuff we have here. So I want this to kind of be a worldwide access. I want Indie Film Hustle to be kind of a hub for not only great free content, but also really detailed education that they can really sink their teeth into and help. I just want to help. At the end of the day, I want filmmakers to succeed, man. I'm tired of seeing so many filmmakers get their asses handed to them by the business, uh, which is the, the, the exact same – that's the first thing you read when you go to IndieFilmHustle.com is that I'm like, I was just tired of seeing so many filmmakers get destroyed by the business that I'm going to throw my my hat in the ring and see if I can help them out a little bit. Um, and then one other thing, I have a big announcement that I'll be announcing in the next few weeks or so, uh, a very big project that I'm going to be doing uh, that will further educate um, the Indie Film Hustle tribe, as I like to call them. Uh, and do something that I have never seen done before. So uh, I haven't I haven't announced it yet, and I've been teasing people for the last few weeks about it, uh, and, and I've been getting emails, what the hell are you doing? We have to know! I'm like, calm down, it'll, it'll come. <laughs> so, uh, you know, at the end of the day, I'm gonna, uh, it's gonna be something that's gonna really help a lot of filmmakers, as well as do something I think that no one has done uh, in the way that we're gonna do it, so. That's uh, that's enough for 2016. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks for leaving us hanging on the edge there. <laughs> and we're going to be hugely in common, but you can't know. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. And we're going to be doing. Mo- I'm gonna, I, I have probably another 10 or 15 courses that we're, we're planning to release this year. Post production workflow I'm working on, an Instagram uh, one to help again marketing and trying to get the word out. Um, a bunch of different kinds of courses that we're going to be releasing, uh, and I'm in negotiations with. A few other people to try to bring other content in as far as really high-end lighting courses and, and deep, the camera courses and breaking down a red camera and all this kind of stuff that I'm I'm currently in negotiations with because we're really trying to create a hub we're trying to we're trying to change the world but our little niche again not trying to change everything but just trying to change our world which is independent filmmakers and really help them out from a truly humble place to kind of just like guys we just want to help you out here i wish i love about it is that you're you make a guy like me feel like it's doable yeah and that's what i that's what i hope we i could do man that's that's if if i've done that and i've I've got so much fan mail um from people who said exactly that like man you've you've changed my perspective on 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 this i after listening to your podcast and reading what you do, I, I feel that I can do this. Like, I, I there's hope for me. And I really never knew that. Like, I never felt that I was doing something that profound for people. I just thought, I'm like, look, I'm going to give you guys some information. But when, when you start helping people at that level, um, those are the kind of fans you want. Those are the kind of people that you want in your tribe. Because you're helping them at a big level. And you want to continue to help them many years to come and continue to build that relationship up to the point where, you know, it, it, they they become their own big thing because like, look, you know, like, like uh, have you ever heard of Pat Flynn? Yeah. Well, Tim Ferriss wrote a book called The 4-Hour Workweek. That book helped launch Pat Flynn, helped launch John Lee Dumas from Entrepreneur on Fire, launch a, a, probably about another 10 or 15 juggernauts that are in that space, all because Tim Ferriss wrote that one book. And then, so he's like kind of the godfather of all these guys. And I hope I can do that for other filmmakers. I hope, not that I'm as big as Tim Ferriss by any stretch, but I hope in my small way that I can inspire other filmmakers to go off and just 
tear down the walls of of the you know the, the business and just go look we did it a different way we don't need the studio don't get me wrong if a studio calls me tomorrow and like would you like to do spider-man 2 i'm like yes <laughs> absolutely would you like to do a star wars movie absolutely let's go you know i would it, it would be wonderful but when you're starting out you don't have to lean on them you can do it by yourself you can go out there make your movie the technology is so cheap it's so affordable it's so powerful if you take the time to learn the technology if you take the time to learn your craft there's no excuse now you can literally make a movie on your iphone like tangerine did and and release it um but let's say you know tangerine is a very unique example but you can get a camera very inexpensively, borrow a camera, uh, you know, rent one, whatever. Go make your movie, get a bunch of actors, write a great script, make a movie, and sell it to an audience that's already waiting for what you want. And you can self-distribute. You don't have to go through distribution anymore. And by the way, I actually had my film, um, which was called Lipstick and Bullets, which a comp- it was a compilation of all of my short films, plus all this kind of cool content that I was talking about. And I got it all back. I'm like, you know what, guys? You haven't done anything for me. I'm tired of what you're doing. Um, our deal is over, and I'm out. And I started selling it myself to my audience. And guess what? I'm making money with it, you know, because I'm able to get it to the audience that wants it. They had no idea how to get it to the audience that wanted that content. And that's a problem with distributors. They do very much shotgun approach to things as opposed to niche approach. And that's the future, niche Niche, niche, niche. The riches are in the niches. I love that. <laughs> the riches are in the niches, and it's called show business for a reason because business yeah. is twice as long as the word show. <laughs> Two, and I and I I can't take uh, credit for either of them, but uh, we'll use them here because other people told me those those quotes. But I love them. They're great. The riches are in the niches, and the word business is twice as long as the word show, and there's a very specific reason for that. But you guys, whoever's listening to this, you have the ability to do it all. You just have to educate yourself. Go to resources like Doc's Resource here, this wonderful podcast. Go to our podcast. Go to go to our sites. Reach. Go out there. The information's there. You just have to do the work, and that's what a lot of people are afraid of doing is the work. But if you do the work, you can make it. There's no excuse anymore. When I was coming up, you know how much it cost me to do my first demo reel? 50 grand shot on 35 wow. millimeter to do three commercials. You know what I mean? And I was in wow. debt for I was in debt for years. Nowadays, I would have done 20 commercials for that. You yeah. know, shot on a red and I would have an insane reel and I could have gone out and hustled that reel. But nowadays is a lot different than back then. 35 was the only way to do it. There was no internet. There there was no anything like it was it was a different world i know i sound like an old fart when i talk like that but um it's very it was just very very different different place in the in in the world at the time so no excuse guys you can do it there's no question about it i I believe in you (laughs) that's awesome love that well alex this has just been phenomenal i I could go on another two three hours i'm sure you could too (laughs) no problem We'll just uh, have links in the show notes and at DocKennedy.com to link up with you. Yeah. There's going to be a mountain of show notes here. So uh, <laughs> we're going to link to everything that you were talking about as much as I can get in there. I appreciate that, my friend. I appreciate that. Yeah. If there's anything we can be doing for you besides the support, we're uh, there for you. Spread the word, man. It's like a, it's like a, a virus. We gotta, we gotta, you got to be that outbreak monkey, man. we got to get it out there. Yeah. You know, got to get the so information. Like I'm sorry? We're that cowbell. Yeah, the, cowbell. I, need, I need more cowbell. I definitely need more cowbell, without question. Just get the, you know, and if it, and, and, and uh, last thing I want to say, guys, if, if, if you don't get the information from me, just go find, or, or from Doc or anybody, go find it somewhere. The information is there. It's so much good information out there uh, to go get and educate yourselves and learn. There's books, there's videos. I mean, there's just a plethora of information out there. Uh, that you can go and find what you need to make your movie and make not only make your movie, but plan out a strategy to maintain yourself as an artist and not just kind of put all your energy in trying to make a movie because that's not enough anymore. You have to build an audience. You have to build a strategy that you can maintain yourself as an artist for many years to come. Because if you don't, you're just going to be one of the many filmmakers I see on the, the Boulevard of Broken Dreams here in Hollywood. And that that boulevard's very real, by the way. I see, I literally see them. Uh, it's it's a very very rough place. So, just plan things out and go after your dreams, and 
Don't let anyone stop you, man. You have no excuse anymore. Hey guys, I hope you liked that one. It was a lot of fun. Doc is, uh, it was a lot of fun to talk to Doc and, you know, he's just starting out on his podcast. Uh, he launched it uh, a little bit ago and he's just kind of revved that back up now. But uh, he has a lot of great resources as well on his website. If you want to go to his website, head over to DocKennedy.com. That's D-O-C-K-E-N-N-E-D-Y.com. And he's got a lot of good articles as well as his podcast. uh, And he has a lot of good guests as well. So speaking of community and speaking of getting out there and learning as much as you can about the film biz, uh, I've created an online community for us to all kind of get together and interact with over on Facebook. It is a private group. It's the Indie Film Hustle uh, private Facebook group. And you can can sign up for free at IndieFilmHustle.com forward slash Facebook. And there you'll get first cracks at any new materials and content that we're putting out because we post it there first before anywhere else uh, as well as uh, interact with other people, show your work off, ask questions. Uh, it's a direct line not only to me but also to the rest of the community. So IndieFilmHustle.com forward slash Facebook. And as always, please head over to FilmmakingPodcast.com and leave us an honest review of the show. It really helps us out a lot. And thank you to all you guys who've done it. You guys have been giving us great reviews and great comments on the show, and I really, really appreciate it. It does help us out getting the word out on Indie Film Hustle and what we're trying to do and help the film, uh, the indie film community out. So filmmakingpodcast.com. So guys, I also get a lot of emails from you guys asking me what I can do to support uh, you and what we're doing here at Indie Film Hustle. Um, and the best way you could do that is by visiting our sponsors, partaking in whatever they're offering, um, and then a lot of the um, courses and things like that that we create uh, as well. Um, we're going to be coming up with a brand new film school, an online film school that we're going to be launching hopefully in the next uh, couple weeks. And that's going to have all new courses, all new everything. We're going to be giving a lot of free uh, previews away for those as well on our YouTube channel and just going to be a lot of great stuff. So with that said, our second sponsor of the day is one of my favorite courses that we offer is the uh, USC Film School's only online course, Directing the Actor by the Legendary Nina Foch. This course is awesome. I took it. I learned so, so much about getting into the mind of an actor and understanding their language. And Nina breaks it down so well, not only for directors, but also for actors and understanding the craft of acting better. So you can head over to IndieFilmHustle.com forward slash USC. And uh, it's really cheap. It's like 25 bucks uh, online course. Really, really well worth it, guys. So definitely check that out. And as always, keep that hustle going. Keep that dream alive. And I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for listening to the Indie Film Hustle podcast at IndieFilmHustle.com. That's I-N-D-I-E-F-I-L-M-H-U-S-T-L-E.com.